Welcome back, everybody. Another podcast episode here. Going to jump in. This is one that I'm going to go right into it. It's an email question. Um, it can, it kind of comes off of a piggybacks off of another one that we did. I think it was episode 102. Ben and I were just looking at it. Episode 101 and 102 were both kind of hold conditioning related. Um, this this message that I got came via email, and I think he's referencing one of those podcast episodes. So let me read it to you, and we'll get into it. Now, I had this on my list. This just came not too long ago. It came over the weekend, um, so I'm a few days out with responding to it. I have not responded back to it yet, so I'm going to end up uh, messaging him back. His name is Andrew, and I'll let him know that we answered it in a podcast. Um, let me get right into it. So I, I really haven't read through it completely. I, I just breezed through it quickly and I said, and Ben and I were actually starting a different podcast and we realized we've already touched on that subject, but this one is connected to it. So let me make, try to make it all make sense. It says, hey Jeremy, I'm a first time gun dog trainer and have an almost eight month old lab. I came across your Bella Be Good video on YouTube and now listen to your podcast. I've binged I've binged almost 40 episodes over the last two weeks. That's that's a lot. Uh, I'm a big fan of your work, and I can't explain how much your videos and ideas have helped me and my dog. So first off, I want to thank Andrew for that, um, and all of you. I want to, uh, we've 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 received just great support um, over the years, and more so even recently. Um, especially on all the channels, YouTube especially. So I, I think uh, the YouTube is, I've seen such a shift in the YouTube stuff, but let's, I don't want to, so he touches on that because he want, he found us there and I, I'm, I'm really grateful for that. So that's something that we're trying to grow and continue to grow and with your help, we will be able to do that. I'll pl- a shameless plug right now. If you're not following us on YouTube, I'd ask that you do. That's the reason why more people are being able to find us. So thank you for that. Here, here's what he says. My dog has great natural retriever instinct. Raring to go after the bumper when it's thrown, initially brought it back very nicely. He seemed to be progressing rapidly. He was making multiple 50-yard retrieves around the age of four to six months and was responsive to all my commands. My problem started when he turned seven months, with him dropping the bumper when he came back and making a retrieve that has since evolved into him both dropping the dummy and now playing keep away from me. I have tried shortening his retrieves, making retrieves in the hallway, against a fence, and with a long lead, but to no success. I thought it might be time to start hold conditioning, and I followed along with your videos for a week, and my dog progressed quickly. However, after listening to one of your podcasts, where you responded to another listener's question about the same topic, you said the issue right, you said the issue might have been more to do with recall in a seven-month-old dog might be on the young side for hold conditioning. I stopped hold conditioning, training, and stripped back his overall training to focus more on heel and recall with no retrieving. I kept this up for two to three weeks and noticed a big improvement in his healing and recall and continued to drill heel and recall work at every opportunity. All this progress seemed to go out the window when I brought out a dummy, and again, he's mouthing and dropping the, the bumper and plays keep away with me. Any thoughts or suggestions would be greatly appreciated. I'm sure this has more to do with me, the trainer, than the dog. Thanks for your time, Andrew. So, there's a lot here. It, it, there's, there, well, there can be a lot here, or it could be real simple. Um, and, and so, I'm gonna answer. I'm gonna try to answer it both ways. First off, I think it's interesting as I read back on this. You sound like you remind me of a guy that just sent me a video. Um, I just got a series of videos from a guy on Facebook and I I saw them today, watched them and I responded back to him. And he had some really nice stuff. He had a little dog, he wanted to know what I thought of it, wanted to know if I thought it could make a good Ched dog. He had some videos, the dog was making the retrieve with the dummy, um, lining out, uh, quasi hunting. I mean, it wasn't a real hunt, but it was kind of hunting a little bit, picking up, bringing it back. And it was great. I, I don't know. I would guess the young puppy was probably around 14, maybe 14 weeks, maybe maybe as old as 16 weeks, but somewhere between 12 and 14 weeks. So we're talking three to four months old. And it was really nice and it was really natural. Um, the dog did very well. Then he showed me a couple videos where it was obedience and he was working on steadiness and he was working on remote sit and he was working on a little bit of heel work. And it was, I was, I was real impressed. I thought it was really good. And I can tell the guy, you can tell because he sent those to me, I think almost looking for reassurance of, yes, you're doing well, things look good, you got yourself a really good puppy on your hands. And I told him that. What I also told him was, things are going very well, and I don't know how old that dog is, 
but I caution you to understand that I spend 10 to 12 months working on that kind of stuff and more, you know, a little bit more. We continue to go down the road with it. And you'll know what I'm talking about if you watch Bella Be Good, if you watch Live with Spry, if you watch, if you're watching the Cali series that we're doing right now on YouTube, you'll see that progression. I don't just, when things go really well, like this guy had, I can just, I know what's going to happen. So what I said in my answer to him was, look like you got a really good start. I want to remind you that regardless of how much we want them to, they only mature at a certain rate. And at some point, you're good, and probably soon, because it didn't sound like he'd run into many problems. It sounded, looked like things were going very well, and, and it sounded like things were going very well. At some point, he's going to run into an issue. And when he runs into an issue, I said, you'll have to stop, you'll have to go back, you'll have to fix it. And that's okay, it's not a problem, it's just something that's gonna happen. And I bet you there's a strong potential when he read that, he was, he was probably thinking, no, things, this dog's different. I have the LeBron. I, 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 always, I always see this where I think everyone thinks they're, they're, their kids are LeBron James and just abnormally talented. And for a, a while they are, but reality sets in and there are very few LeBrons out there. There's a lot more people that have to work real hard to achieve stuff, and it takes time and patience. So I think he's, I think I, I'm just, I'm just reading the future and going, you're going to run into it. Be ready for it. And the other thing is, is regardless of how quickly you think you need to go, the dog dictates the pace. And so that, I bring that story up because then I'll go back at this one and I go, you know, he's a first time trainer. His puppy's eight, almost eight months old right now. His dog, a nat, great natural instinct. That video that I watched of that 12 to 16 week old dog had 100% great natural instinct. Like the retrieving was not trained. It was natural. He ran out, he picked it up and he brought it back. The one thing I didn't really say to him was, you know, the dog would bring it back and he was quick to give the dog a treat and the dog got clearly had a habit of spitting it out immediately. As soon as he got back to him, he wanted to spit it out to get the treat. That's something I would avoid because I think that's habit forming. I want the dog to encourage the hold. I want the dog to bring it to me and hang on to it. I want to take it from the dog and then give it back to the dog. You'll see that in our YouTube videos. I'm not in a hurry to give the dog a biscuit for rewarding the dog for spitting the dummy out. I think there could be a issue that will come up where the dog gets four or five feet away and spits the dummy out in anticipation for the biscuit. And then it's 10 feet, and then it's 15 feet, and then pretty soon we got, the dog brings it back 50% of the time. The other 50% of the time he drops it short. Could be, could, did you see where I'm going here? You could be creating an issue in the future. Now, I don't know what that, I don't know that that happened here with Andrew, but let's get back to Andrew's question. Andrew says, my dog has great natural instincts, retrieving. And that's, that's what I saw with this guy's video. That's what I'm envisioning right now with, with Andrew. Raring to go after the bumper when it's thrown, he initially brought it back nicely, seemed to be progressing rapidly. We were making multiple 50 yard retrieves around the age of four to six months. Sounds familiar. Looks like what this guy's doing. Here's the thing, the wheels came off for him around seven months. Started dropping the dummy, not coming back with it. So here's where I go, somewhere between four to six months and seven months this happened. What in that four to six months, when it was going good, my if you could rewind the clock and go back, I'd say, slow down. Because 50 yard, multiple 50 yard retrieves at four months to me is too much. It's, it's great and your dog might be able to do it, but you're, 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 you're accelerating so quickly that you're gonna lose control of the car. And instead of driving so fast that you lose control of the car, just keep a nice pace cruise along the country road at 25 miles an hour instead of flooring it to 100 and then going, oh shit, I can't steer it anymore. Because now all of a sudden wheels fall off. So I just think it's a huge lesson in patience. Now, here's you, you have listened to some of our stuff, I think, um, because you did exactly what I would have said. You said, I tried shortening the retrieves. I tried making his retrieves in the hallway against a fence in a long lead, but no success. My question is how? How? How do you not have success in those situations? So I think something else has happened there if you can't, because what, what you did with those remedies to that issue is you set yourself up for success, which is what I tell people to do. 
If you make a retrieve with something at your back, the dog can't run past you. Can't play keep away if it's in a long hallway. There's nowhere for it to go, so you can't lose. Now, what you could do is the dog could quit and sit at the end of the hallway, but I don't see very many puppies in that four to seven month old range that are able to just sit still at the end of the hallway and win that battle. They won't outweight you, usually because they're antsy, they gotta move, they gotta do stuff. So shortening the retrieves, now did it go, shortening the retrieves in this example is a relative term. Because if I back up, you were making 50 yard retrieves at four to six months. Does shortening the retrieve make it 25 yards? Does shortening the retrieve make it 10 yards? Because shortening the retrieve might mean four feet. Because think about it, if you send the dog and it takes two bounds, leap, leap, and it's there, and now it turns around and it doesn't have any other options to go anywhere but back to you. You're doing a bad job if you're not able to encourage the dog to come back to you. Like you should be able to get the dog to take two steps back with the dummy in its mouth. And if it doesn't, you should be able to outlast its willingness to sit still for that period of time. So it's you, you said here, the long lead, you've done these things without but no success. You have to create success. It's not magically happening just because of your setup. It's certainly helping. It has to be helping because it's eliminating some of the issues. When we go back and we look at what the problem is, the problem was dropping the dummy short or running off and playing keep away. Eliminate the chance for them to run off and play keep away. That's easy to do. Eliminate the chance for them to drop short by shortening it up so much that short is almost unachievable. Like not getting back to you is almost impossible. So. One thing I think is I would, before I go to hold conditioning, I wanna have some decent retrieve. I'm backing up and going four to six months. So let's just say it was six months. So six months, things were going good. Now you're at eight months. The problem came at seven months. So you've had a month of four weeks of issue. I read, read further and I say you, you stopped retrieving for two to three weeks. You did foundational work. So let's move into your next chapter. You said you thought about it the whole conditioning, but then you stopped because you would listen to that podcast where I told that guy with the seven month old dog that didn't have good retrieve that before you do hold conditioning, I want something to build off of. I think you sound like you probably had something to build off. That last example, I don't know that he did. And, and his dog was six months. And there's a big difference between six months and seven months with some dogs. With some dogs, the big difference is the opposite. Sometimes the seven month old is less mature than the six month old. It all depends on the dog. So because you heard me tell Tom Smith in or Joe, whoever, you know, I'm picking a random name here. I know a Tom Smith, that's why I kind of changed that name. But so Joe Humphrey, or I probably know a Joe Humphrey too, but name the, pick a name, right? John Doe has a story that with his podcast episode that I told him and in it, I said at six months, you gotta be careful because your puppy might be a little too young. That doesn't mean that that's a blanket statement for everybody. So you sound like you had some nice retrieve up till six months. So I look at that and I go, well, then maybe you had something to build off of. So maybe hold conditioning at that point was a decent thing to try. It sounds like you tried it, but then you quit because you had heard a podcast that said, to another person that maybe that's too early. So I think we have, this, the takeaway from this is nobody should listen to any one particular piece of content out there, whether it's mine or anyone else's, and make decisions on their dog based on that one thing. Absorb lots of it, because I, if you look at some of my, I know I've had this uh, in some of our whole conditioning content pieces where I've said, I've done it as young as six months. I've also done it as old as 14, 15 months and older. So it, I don't have a set thing. It depends on the dog. So now, I, I, so you set aside the idea of hold conditioning, which maybe you shouldn't have. Maybe you should have kept going with it. I can't tell because I, I, I don't see it. I haven't seen the dog. I haven't seen the training. But what I would say is you maybe should have kept going with it. Now you stopped for two to three weeks you had big improvement in heel and recall. And I look at that and I go, that's great. I'm questioning, how come you didn't have really good heel and recall prior to it? You had a lot of real good retrieving. So now I'm starting to think, were priorities maybe reversed at one point? I don't think, 
I, I think it comes from a, things in the field are unlocked by things that happen in the home and in the yard. And what I mean by that is by the skills that you develop. You build foundational skills in controlled training situations. You apply those regularly and consistently, both in training and everyday use. It makes us, it allows us to enjoy our dogs more. And then we can use the exact same skills to transition the dog into the field because those same things are needed in order for us Recall was an issue that I've talked about with other people where I said, you know, I don't know if it's a retrieving thing as much as it is you can't get your dog to come back to you. In that scenario, that specific situation, recall will help that. You got your recall better. Perfect. So I'm looking at it and going, maybe we're, maybe you listening to this stuff started to adjust priorities properly. And now you're at two to three weeks of good improvement with that. And it sounds like you're kind of excited about it and you're going to work on it at every opportunity. Great. Keep that going. You got five more months of that, let's say, at a minimum. That gets you to 12, 12 months, 13 months. It doesn't end there if it's not done. Like it's got to be a constant ongoing thing. Now, it, the last paragraph says, all this progress seemed to go out the window when I brought the bumper out. He's still mouthing and dropping it. So you got better at heel work. You got better at foundation work. The same issues showing up with the retrieving. Good heel work and good re recall without a dummy is not the silver bullet. There are no silver bullets. So this is a perfect example of you can't take a pill and just think it's gonna fix everything. What you can do is take a pill that will help this and then you can work on this and work on this and work on this and work on this and strengthen all the parts and pieces because retrieving is not just recall. It's not just heel work. It's not just delivery. It's all those things and more combined. And if you have, so look at that, look at the idea of a good retrieve. A good retrieve starts out with good steadiness. Like it's not a good retrieve if the dog breaks, right? So we got to have a dog that steady. We got to have a dog that can mark or have memory. So we have different drills for both of those. They either mark visually or they mem remember a setup. So A, they need to be steady. And if we set it up as a memory, what do they have to be able to do? They have to heal. They have to be under control. Then when we get back, they have to be steady. Then when we send them, they have to have memory. Reverse that and make it a mark. It's just instead of the memory part, it's, they have to visually watch it, be able to judge distance, be able to remember that. Then they have to keep carry a nice line especially through distractions, through friction, through other things that would draw them away from the line. So they gotta work, they gotta be able to run a straight line, nice line, hold that line. They gotta be able to hunt at times because they might have to use their nose when they get there because they can't see it. Then they gotta be able to pick it up right. Then they gotta bring it back to us without being distracted, without being drawn, without being taken away from something by something else. Then they gotta hold it all the way, then they gotta deliver it. Then they got to remain under control to reset and do it again. I just named like six or seven things that the dog's got to do in order to make what we consider a good polished retrieve. So now let's look at those as links. Those are links in a chain. And let's say that, let's say I named six or seven of them. Let's say you have four of them. How well will your chain work? If you're missing, if every, th every other or every third link is gone, your chain won't work very good. But if you've got all the pieces and they're connected, it works really good. Right now you're trying to fix one piece of the link and thinking that my chain should work, but it's not. It's a combination of everything. So we can't look at compartmentalizing, I'll fix this, it'll fix that. You'll fix this, it'll help you work on fixing the next, which will help you work on fixing the next, which will help you, but you gotta have them all. And so the reversing that, going back to the idea of setting yourself up for success by using hallways, by using something against, you know, leaning, going up. A fence is only gonna help, a fence at your back is only gonna help you when a dog runs past you. It won't help you if a dog stops short. If the dog doesn't deliver all the way, standing with a fence to your back isn't gonna help you. So don't, that, don't think that that's the fix of everything. That's a fix to one issue. The dog that runs short and stops short and wants to lay down and chew or drop short and not come all the way back to you, Fix that with some, we, the back, the fence isn't gonna help you with that. Make the hallway work. Get excited. So here's another thing you can try. This isn't your fix all. This isn't, I'm gonna tell you this so you don't go, well, I'll just do that and this will fix everything. When the dog doesn't come back to you, turn and walk away from him. Just leave him. 
brisk pace walk away. Look over your shoulder and the second the dog sees that and realizes he's leaving, they usually come. And when they come, I praise them. It's timing. What are they doing right? Remind them and let them know what's right at that moment. When they do something wrong, you correct them at that moment. Otherwise, it doesn't register. It doesn't make sense to them. So, dog won't come to me. I, I had one of my first dogs. Um, I struggled with this dropping short. She wanted to hang up and, and do, stare me down. She, she'd run, if it was a 50 yard retrieve, she'd run 25 yards and stop and look at me. And, and you could just see it. What do you want to do, dad? Do you want to come get me? Do you want, uh, and I got pissed, I got frustrated. So the fix with her was I just ignored her. I would turn around and walk away from her. And I'd walk away quickly, like I'm leaving. And she didn't want to set the dummy down. That dog in particular did not want to set the dummy down. So what would she do? She'd come running up to me. And she'd come running. I wouldn't even pay attention to her. I'd ignore her. I'd just keep walking. I'm going over this way. And here's Remy. She's just, it's killing her because I'm not paying her any attention. I'm not giving her the focus that she wanted. I'm not entertaining her game. I'm not playing that game. And so I just said, fine, you want to play that game? I quit. I'm leaving. And she comes running. And so finally, when she'd run past me two, three times and make sure, dad, I am right here. She positioned herself right in front of me to say, I'm here, I'm here, I'm here. She wanted me to take the dummy from her. She wanted me to give her some type of an attention. And so then I got down on my knee and I said, come here. And she was so overwhelmed by getting, gaining my attention, I tricked her into coming to me and going, yeah, you are good, that's a good girl. And there's the praise, because now you're exactly where I want you. You're in my lap holding onto that dummy and I'm praising you for it. Now what, took, what it took for me to get there was first off I had to recognize it, then I had to practice it and execute on it, and then I had to control my temper when she stopped short again because damn it, you shouldn't be doing that. And I would, if I was upset and mad at her, she looked at that as come and get me. That's just one specific dog. Sometimes you don't need to walk away. Sometimes I think you can get down on one knee and encourage them into you. A lot of it has to do with how you set yourself up to this point. I'm reading it again and seeing you did some, sounds like you had some really good things going up until that four, around the four to six months range. Now four to six months is pretty big statement there. Uh, at six months, that's a two month six months old the dog is and that's a two month window we're talking four to six months old is one third of the dog's entire life it's a really big chunk of time so i would look at more detail of okay when exactly did you start seeing the problem did it start showing up around four months it just got bad around seven but it progressively got worse it was tolerable up until it was six months or you know what is what is that but prior to the issue is i guarantee you it just didn't happen overnight it got slowly and progressively worse, which is why I warned this guy that's got the puppy coming in right now at, let's say it's 14 weeks old, and it's starting to, it's stopping about five feet from him and spitting the antler out immediately with looking for the biscuit. That's gonna turn into 10 feet, and that's gonna turn into 15 feet, and then pretty soon, that dog's gonna be six months old, and he's gonna go, well, it was really good up until about four months, but now all of a sudden he won't do it. It didn't happen overnight. It's, I saw it happening at 12 weeks, 13 weeks. You just, it was so subtle you didn't recognize it. Little things creep up and little problems become bigger problems. Bigger problems become real big problems. You have to try to address stuff right away. Usually the emails don't come to me when it's just a slight little issue because we don't either recognize it or we don't think it's that big of a deal until it compounds and then compounds again and then compounds again and then I get the email. So I think what we gotta do with, so hold conditioning might be the fix. If you had enough there, and the other thing, the other reason I said it is because you started hold conditioning, it says here, I thought it, I thought it might be time to start hold conditioning and following along with your videos for a week and my dog progressed quickly. Keep going, I, I would not stop. If things are going good, keep going. So I look at it and I go, in this specific scenario, from the, from the little bit of information that I got from the four paragraphs that you sent me, I say keep working on improving on heal and recall. Because in two to three weeks, you noticed a big improvement in healing and recalling and will continue to drill and recall, drill, heal and recall 
at every opportunity. Those are your words. Keep doing that because at eight weeks, if you are seeing incredible big improvements, quote unquote, big improvements in two to three weeks, you got to, you probably got more to go. You probably got a ways to go yet to get good. Don't settle. So here's, here's, this is a perfect example of if that were the case, it sounds like you probably had average, let's, if it's a letter grade, you were probably around C work. You were achieving C work with heal and recall. And then you focus on it for two to three weeks and you're starting to get better. Big improvement. I mean, you might be up to a B. Don't settle for a B. Because B's need to be worked on to become A's. If you want to take the next steps, with it's always up to you. What degree do you want to take it to? If you're happy and satisfied, I'm happy and satisfied. But I think what people have to understand is if they want to get to the next level as far as performance, you can't settle for mediocrity. You can't settle for, eh, that's okay, let's go on. Because that's okay is needs to be, that's really, really good. Maybe that's great before I can start adding complications to it, taking the next steps. So I think I would continue to work on that. I might go right back to the table and start whole conditioning again. And work through it and see how that goes. Understanding we're not retrieving during this window. I mean, it, it you know, you you went right back to the exact same problem, it sounds like, prior to your stint of heel work and recall. The same issues came right back, or, you know, I, I say came back, well, they never went away. You had problems with retrieve and delivery, then you worked on heel and recall, and then you have the same problems with delivery. It's because delivery really wasn't addressed there, it was heel and recall, which sounds like it got better which is good, but like I said, you don't fix all your problems with one answer. It's just not there. I think a lot of people wanna have one answers to get it all fixed, and it just, just doesn't work. There are no silver bullets. So, Andrew, I hope that helps. Um, it's a great question. It piggybacks off of, and it really feeds off of, and for listeners that are, if you're listening to this podcast and it's your first time, I think this is why this is why we tr like to treat our podcast the way we do it. We look at it almost as this it's a living journal of, of to some degree. We talk about what's going on daily life here. We talk about some of the projects that we have going on. We address some of the questions and and things that we get from a message standpoint with the hopes of if one person asks it, more people have the problem. It's it's something that, you know, in this scenario, in this case, this podcast is directly connected to other podcasts. Hold conditioning is probably a, a topic that we have dis well, we've done lots and lots of videos on. We have a hold conditioning video that we used to sell and we put it up for free. And the reason we put it up for free, you can download it, you can watch it on YouTube, you can download it from our website. It is free because I think it is so important. It is such an important part and step in a retriever training process, regardless of shed hunting, bird hunting, doesn't matter what you're doing with them. I think it's just a real important part and it is the alternative to force fetch. And it is an alternative to force fetch. And I think it's really important because there's a lot of people out there that are A, uncomfortable with the idea of it, of force fetch, me, myself included, and B, are afraid to do it. And I don't, I don't, disagree with that. I, 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 I have no interest in put, putting that kind of pain on a dog. It just doesn't, it's not logical to me. But so this is a way that I think a lot of people are, would like to do it. They just don't know that A, it, that they can do it or B, how to do it. So that's why we feel so strongly about hold. Our hold conditioning topic has been discussed in lots of podcasts. So between all the ones that we've done um, connected to them, you're, we're relating back and forth. So this one is tying back to one or two podcasts that we did in the last couple of weeks as well. So I think they're all intertwined. I think our podcast is also intertwined with some of our YouTube series. That's why I talk about YouTube a lot. Uh, we, we are utilizing both in ways where they overlap at times and then also individually because each one has their strength. And so we do some things from an audible standpoint here with a podcast that just works better that way. We do some that on a video standpoint that we're going to do 
what is it, our Instagram movies or whatever it's called, Instagram, IGTV. IGTV. Some of our stuff is IGTV, some of our stuff is YouTube. Some of it just fits better in different compartments. And so that's why we are trying to utilize as many of them as we can to the best, to the best um, ability that we can to give the best information. So thank you guys for the support. I appreciate it. I got a little long winded on this one, but Andrew, I hope it helps you um, in those, those of, out there that are, have similar. I know it's, I, I wanted to use this one because I just feel like this one's going to help more than just Andrew, I hope. So thank you guys for the support. Appreciate it. If you do us the favor, if you're listening on an app, subscribe to the podcast. If your app has the ability to give you a, to leave a review, I'd appreciate it if you did it there. If you're not subscribed to our, our YouTube, I'd ask that you do that. Um, and obviously our social platforms, Instagram and Facebook are most, most people I think are, uh, li- that are listening to this probably are following there too. But if you're not, that'd be great too. So thank you guys so much for the support. We appreciate it greatly.